You could wake up to the sound of birds chirping every morning and the fresh air and walk by the riverside every weekend. Or you could find yourself living in a soulless jungle out of a shoebox, wondering if tonight's the night you get mugged or having to deal with overflowing bins all the time every time you step out. To add to it, the cost of rent, the cost of transport could probably eat into your savings, making you wonder why you moved to the UK in the first place. Which is why where you live in the UK is one of the most important decisions you will make after you move here. So the question is, can you afford to make the wrong decision? Okay, things probably got a little grim, but that's what we're trying to prevent. I'm trying to help you make the decision in the best manner possible without facing too many issues. So today we're gonna to be talking about what factors to consider while choosing where to live in the UK, how to evaluate those factors, and how to arrive at a decision finally. With that, I'm Ashika and let's dive in. So I'll use our example of how we decided which place we should stay in and what factors we considered, how we evaluated it. And then you can use those same principles to make a decision for yourself. So my husband's office was earlier based out of Paddington. So all the decisions we made were also focused around the fact that it needed to have easy access to Paddington. So the first decision we made was to stay outside London and there are a couple of reasons for that. We knew from everything we had seen and read and heard that spaces in London were A, really expensive and B, pretty small. And based on all of the conversations we had with friends, with families, with colleagues, a lot of them agreed that staying outside made a lot more sense. Apart from that, we also have two dogs and my child and we honestly wanted more space for them to be able to play around versus staying in a smaller place. And with these requirements that we had, we knew getting a space in London would be extremely expensive. Plus, I think when we were moving to the UK, we actively made a decision that we wanted to step away from city life, having always lived in cities. And we wanted a more slow down life, which is why we were pretty clear that we didn't want to live in London. So ideally, your first step should also be whether you want to stay in a city or just outside a city, if that's where your job is based out of, or that's where your college is. Now, if you're clear already on whether you want to stay in the city or outside, great. If not, we'll talk about some more factors which can help you decide that. Now, moving on to the second factor, which is all the possible towns that you can consider. Assume you want to stay just outside London, and I'm taking London as an example. It can be any city, and we'll also come to what you need to do if you want to stay within London in a bit. So what you want to do is look at the station that is closest to either your office or your university, whichever it is, and keep that as your focal point. And then from there, draw a little radius and then you get a little circle based on all the areas that you want to consider. So assume your radius is 45 minutes of travel. So now you're looking at all the areas within 45 minutes of travel from London, right? So keep that as the areas that you want to look at. Now, if you're not sure what 45 minutes is, just look at the map. And from London, just take Maidenhead for instance. And now we know Maidenhead takes about 20 minutes. So you know it falls under the 45 minute range and you can probably extend it a little more. And then that gives you your circle. Now all the areas that fall within this path will either be under 45 minutes or slightly more than 45 minutes depending on the trains. But that gives you a really good base to start with. Now, in case you don't even have the slightest idea of where to start from, there is another video I've made which basically covers the top towns outside London. And if you want, you can have a look at that video. It basically talks about the towns, the north, south, east and west, depending on which part of London you'll be working in. And it gives you a good starting point just in case you have no idea. Now, if you want to live in London instead, use the tube station instead of a train station and use that again as your focal point to map out points within London that you'd want to consider or areas within London that you're okay considering. Now, the third thing I did was Google so best towns 45 minutes away from London to live in. And that gives you a really good base again to start from. And a lot of the towns which appeared in multiple articles, I retained. Some of the towns which appeared in very few articles, but they had very specific reasons for liking it. Again, I retained. And that was then my starting point because, well, usually people's reviews really tend to help. And the reason why I did this was because, especially if you don't know much about the UK, Picking a town from Google Maps can be honestly like shooting an arrow in the dark. You never know what you'll hit, what you'll miss, and it's a really big gamble. So 
it's something you might not want to do. Now, when I did this, some of the places that I did manage to narrow down were on were uh, Maidenhead, St. Albans, Hemel Hempstead, Watford, just among others. If you're going to live in London, you can just do the same process. Again, Google best places to live in South London or East London or near Canary Wharf, near Paddington. It'll already give you a list. That's a good starting point again. Now, before I go ahead, I do have a request. If you do like this video, please hit the subscribe button. Unlike the big celebrities, it's always the small creators that need your support and your help. Your support means I can grow this channel, I can find better topics to uh, do my research on, to help you understand everything you need to know about moving to the UK, about how to move the U to the UK in the first place. So your support means a lot. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And you can also leave me a comment in the comment section below or give this video a thumbs up if you think it has helped you. So what you want to do is calculate not just how much you're going to spend on a daily basis, but on a monthly basis, and then we'll adjust it with rent. If you'd like to know where you can check this, you could just head over to Trainline, and I've already calculated everything so you get an approximate idea. So for Maidenhead, on a daily basis, it costs one person £28.10 to get to Paddington and back, and three times a week makes it approximately £337 per month. Now, if we're looking at St. Albans, it's £27.40 a day, and it works out to £328 per month. If you're planning on living in London, remember to do the same thing when it comes to the cost involving the tube. Now, hold on to this information. What we're going to do next is check the average rent for the areas that you're interested in. So there are two ways to do this. Now, either you can go to Rightmove and look at existing properties that have been listed and see what the rates are like, or what you can do is you can go to home.co.uk and get an average idea and the median rents of all of the properties that are listed right now. Now, if you check this for Maidenhead, you'll see the median rent for Maidenhead for a three bedroom house is 1800 pounds. But St. Albans, on the other hand, is 2100 pounds, which is a substantial difference. Now, the next thing I did was check crime. And I say this because I have a young child. So obviously the crime rate was really important for me. I wanted a place which had as little crime as possible while fitting in, into all of the other factors. To check crime, you can just head over to this website called crimerate.co.uk. Now this scorecard might scare you a little seeing that Maidenhead is the second most unsafe town in the UK, but you need to see the numbers per 1000 people. So Maidenhead has a crime rate of 67 per 1000 people, which is relatively low. Crime in St. Albans is even lower with 59 per 1000 people. But another town we had initially considered because the rents were really low and so it was a lot cheaper, but the crime rate was a lot higher there. Slough was 107 crimes per 1,000 people, so we immediately wrote it off. Now, another factor we considered was distance to other major cities, not just London. So, Maidenhead was located in the southwest, and we didn't really consider too many places on the east or on the south, even if they were equally distant to Paddington, simply because it meant it would take even longer when we wanted to travel anywhere in the UK because we really had big plans of traveling around the UK. So we didn't want to increase that time. Maidenhead on the other hand was a lot better connected to the rest of the country versus places on the east or the south of London. Now it wasn't a really big factor while making our decision, but it was a good to have in our case. Another thing you might want to keep an eye on is council tax because where you live in the UK ultimately determines how much you pay as council tax. Some areas are more expensive to live in, other areas are cheaper to live in. So you want to check rankings. So the average rate for Windsor in Maidenhead is £1,523. St. Albans on the other hand is £1,994, which is again quite a big difference. One more thing you want to check for is the amenities in that town. Now, if you live in London, obviously you have absolutely no challenge. You can completely skip, the, skip this step. But if you stay outside London, some towns have more amenities than others. Now, if you're not sure how to check this unless you actually go to the town, an easy way to do this is to just Google shops in Maidenhead, shops in St. Albans. And what it is, is it gives you this entire list of all the shops that are located. So even if you just scroll through, you can have an idea of how many shops there actually are. In this case, St. Albans had a lot more shops and stores versus Maidenhead, 
But what we did manage to see was that Maidenhead had all everything important, everything that was an essential amenity was already present in Maidenhead. So it wasn't too much of a challenge. But of course, St. Albans had a lot better shops, a lot more shops, a lot more variety. But here's the thing, it shouldn't be too much of a deal breaker because you're not really going to go on a shopping spree every single day, right? So you don't need to have all the shops in your town. It's, it's good to have, of course, I'm not going to debate over that, but it's not an absolute essential. The other thing is a lot of people do this in the UK. What they do is over the weekends, they hop over on a train or just drive down to the next town to get whatever they need. So they either go on a shopping spree or they go to the theater or whatever it is in the next town. And it's very common to use public transport and do all of this over the weekend. So don't be too worried about it in case the place that you're looking at doesn't have too many amenities. Now, one mistake we made when we were moving to the UK was not checking thoroughly enough. We checked and we saw that Maidenhead, for instance, had a hospital. And we assumed it would be like India where a hospital has all the facilities but it doesn't have an A&E. And that was a mistake we made because we came to Maidenhead, we live here, and now we realize there's no A&E, which is accidents and emergencies, which means if there's an accident, I need to drive to the next town. If you plan on moving to the UK, I think it's really, really important you ensure that the town that you plan on living in has an A&E or has one really close by within 10, 15 minutes and not further than that, or you'll probably be in a bit of a fix in case something goes wrong. The next point is especially important if you have children, and it's really important you do this whole process if you have children, because obviously you want to make the right decisions for your children. One of those decisions includes finding a good school or an outstanding school for your child. So what you need is an area with a lot of schools. Within that, you need a lot of good and outstanding schools. And beyond that, you need schools which have high acceptance rates or low rejection rates. So how you can check this is check the gov.uk page and enter the location. It will give you all the schools listed in that borough. And then you can see which of them is outstanding and which of them is good that are available. Now, the challenge is if you join midterm, if you're here before the academic year begins and you go through the entire application process, assuming you meet all the criteria, you don't have too much of a challenge. Your child should get into school. But if you join mid-year, then you only get a space if there is an availability. So it's honestly a huge problem. So one way of doing this is identifying the school that you want and checking what their previous year's acceptance or rejection rate was. So if you don't know where to find that information, if you've narrowed down on the schools that you're interested in, go to their websites. And in most cases, they have a PDF document which talks about last year's application process, how many students applied, how many students were accepted, how many students were rejected. If it's a school which has a really high rejection rate, you know that it's getting too many applications, it's turning people down. And if you're joining Midia, it's going to be a challenge because there's very, very high likelihood you will not get a space in that school. So ideally, you want to look at a place which has a good number of outstanding and good schools and schools which don't have a very high rejection rate because then you know even if you join mid-year the possibility of you getting in is rather high rather than the opposite right in our case one of the biggest decisions why we moved to maidenhead and why we were considering st albans was because there were a lot of uh, good and outstanding schools and we realized that, that since the population was not very high our chances of getting in was higher because of that And one more thing that we did consider, which is uh, probably very relative to us, I don't know if it's going to be uh, applicable to you as well, but we were looking at areas which had uh, good access to nature, well, close proximity to hiking trails, trekking trails, to uh, a lot of green open fields, because that's something we were definitely interested in. And the fact that Maidenhead had the Thames, uh, the Thames uh, flowing through it also really helped. In our case, both St. Albans and Maidenhead had access to a huge green belt just outside, so we're really happy about that. Now, the thing is, there are a lot of factors that you're probably going to have to consider and a lot of details, and it's going to be difficult to keep track of all of them, which is why I made the entire thing in an Excel sheet. Let me show you what it looks like. But just a word before that, some of these factors will be more important to you than other factors. So something I have done in the sheet is assign weights to these factors. What you would need to do, because I've made this sheet editable and you can download it from the description below. 
you should assign weights based on what you think is important for you and then you can assign the score according to that so that when you collectively add up all the scores you then know which place has the most importance for you so what i have done is assign the weightage like you can see and the scores to the factors and based on this there's a final score for all of these places now let me share something really important from the looks of it, St. Albans was ranking really, really high. So then why did we go for Maidenhead, right? Here's the thing. St. Albans was our first preference. When we moved to the UK, I really, really wanted to move to St. Albans. And we kept Maidenhead as our backup. But after we came here and I have been actively searching for four weeks, we realized that getting a house in St. Albans might be trickier than we expected. In the four weeks that we were here, we were able to get five or six viewings for houses in Maidenhead and only one viewing for a house in St. Albans. The reason for this is that primarily there were no houses coming up in St. Albans. There were no houses coming up on the market in the first place. And after the houses came up, considering that we had not been in the UK for long and we had pets and a child, a lot of places were not even open to showing us viewings, especially because of the pets, to be really honest. So in the end, it boiled down to Maidenhead and we picked a house in Maidenhead, not because it was our first preference, but because there was no other option. But we still absolutely love the place. What I'm trying to say is it's really important for you to have a couple of backups in case your first location doesn't work out. So don't go in with a very rigid mindset that this is absolutely the place you want to live in and you will not adjust otherwise. Now, I'm sure you're excited and you can't wait to get started and start doing all of these calculations yourself and figuring out which is the best place for you to stay but if you need a really good starting point i do suggest you watch this video because it's going to help you with the top 10 places to stay outside london 